Well, hi everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Turning the volume down on this Christmas jazz for just a little bit. I'm back on the kitchen counter with some things. Let me go ahead and tell you. Everything you see here is up for auction in the Old Curiosity Shop right now. That's right, it's all listed for auction. And actually, many of these pieces are only going to be auctioned for five days instead of seven. I cut the auction time down just a little bit to get these to you in time to enjoy for Christmas decorating. Now, normally my handling time is four days. It used to be two, but I increased it to four because of a change in eBay's managed payments. I'm not going to get into that right now. That's boring. But I did change my handling time to one day on these items, which means that as soon as I get a bid, I'm going to pack them so that they're ready to be shipped within 24 hours uh, of the time that the person pays. <laughs> did I say that right? Oh, that was bad English, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so some of it, are, some of it is already listed and getting ready to end in just a few days, and the others I just listed today, and they are five-day auctions. Let's see what's what. Zooming in over here, I have a collection of five little acrobatic Santa Clauses. Now, you'll notice that uh, there are some duplicates here. I don't know how these were sold. There's nothing on the bottom. They're ceramic. Uh, but they don't appear to be handmade. Anyway, there are five of them. And as you can see, let's see. Those two guys have the same pose as well as those two. Lots of fun and there's no damage, no chips or cracks, no repairs. Here are these little wonderful Capri, oh my god, these are so, don't these look like they came off the set of the Jetsons? There's the box. Yeah. And uh, it never had a lid, it was covered in cellophane, or I guess by the time these were made, Everyone called it, well, I guess you still called it cellophane, but the, the little taper candles are gone, but the original candle holders are still there. Made in Japan, and this is little foil, tin foil that's been wrapped, you know, into cones. I love it. I think you already saw these. I'm listing these two, well, these four all together. The boots appear to be commercially made probably Japan and the little mugs are Santa heads and they were a homemade ceramic project. Merry Christmas Maureen 1980. Merry Christmas Gregory 1980. 
So these four in one auction. Now back there is an older piece of Fenton Milk glass. I think I already talked about it and showed it to you, but it's finally listed. And again, you can see there's no mark on the bottom. We know it's prior to 1970 and it's even earlier than that because of the transparency, the trans, uh, it's translucent. No, wait a minute. <laughs> it's not translucent. Yes, it is. Trans transparent light goes through you can see through translucent light passes through but you can't see through it opaque you can't see through it at all did I get that right I think so oh boy if I didn't please correct me my brain today just might not be doing what it's supposed to do so a little hobnail piece there by Fenton these didn't sell the first time around, so we'll try it again. Eight. I know we can't have eight people over, but you could pour yourself eight glasses of eggnog and drink them all in one night. Have a party by yourself. Uh, Anchor Hawking Forest Green. Juice glasses there. There are eight of them. And then back there are two more vases by Anchor Hawking as well. We're all familiar with the Ruby Red, which came on the scene in the 30s and the Forest Green in the 50s. And both pattern, both colors, I think, were made into the 1960s. These two vases I'm selling together. Here's a cute little left and pair of Santa of, um, hmm. <laughs> I told you. Snowmen. They have their left and stickers on the back and their corks, which mean are their plastic stoppers. So they're salt and pepper shakers, but notice uh, the holes are on the backs of their heads. So you want to display them on a shelf as little figurines. Nobody's going to even know they're salt and pepper shakers. Mm-hmm. Now this. Okay. My think, my thought, my think, oh, I need a nap. My thought is Cambridge. Uh, I know it's not Anchor Hawking, even though, well, let me stand back up. Okay. <laughs> even though when we put the red back here, the two reds look the same. A ruby red is Anchor Hawking, and that's an Anchor Hawking vase. But this is a better piece of glass, and I'm not taking a shot at Anchor Hawking. They made utilitarian kitchen glass, glass for the home. This was a little bit, this is a little bit better made. And we can see the beautiful polishing on the bottom. You see that? So you Cambridge experts can tell me. I think it's a piece of Cambridge. Ruby glass. I think they advertised this as a double-handed bonbon. But I would fill it up with salted peanuts. I don't know why I got so excited about that, but I would put salted peanuts in that and pour eight glasses of eggnog and have a party, you know, just enjoy yourself. So that's, that's there. And then this, look at that, look at the color on this. Oh my goodness. Now there's no uranium in it. It's not going to glow under a black light, but there must be some lead in this because this thing, oh my goodness, that hunk of glass. I think I've said it before, Miss Marple was always discovering that people had been killed with a hypodermic syringe. I think somebody could have been easily knocked unconscious with this. It is heavy, chunky glass. And look at the clarity, even though it's green, it's just a beautiful piece of glass. Now, sadly, what do you think? Well, not sadly, what do you think, but sadly, what do I think? Sadly, I think it had a lid which is gone. Probably too big for a powder jar on a woman's dresser, but, I, you know, a candy dish, I guess. And I'm going to assume that because of its shape that it had a lid. There's no roughness around the top. There's no inner lid. But a lot, many of these had lids. I don't know who made it. It is a good piece of glass, and it is beautiful. Fill that up with peppermints. Now back here is where you're going to put your Ritz crackers. 
And I know this guy is already listed and probably doesn't have, there's probably not much more time left in this auction. But you have a closer look. You can put your toothbrush in there. Nothing on the bottom. Got three reindeer on that side and three on this side. And Santa. Okay. And, um... Okay, so good. Now, this is also anchor hocking, and this is not a punch bowl. They did make a punch bowl in... Well, you've seen it, right? You've seen it in the ruby... In the, uh... Uh, the green, far screen. This one is just a regular serving bowl. The, the dimensions are different, as you can see. It's a nice big 10 inch diameter bowl. Now it's been used. There are some scratches at the bottom. I don't know, maybe somebody used this as a salad bowl. No chips, no cracks, beautiful glass, no dishwasher damage. Boy, you could put a lot of figgy pudding in that, couldn't you? <laughs> Or rice pudding now I know I know I know that's not a Christmas decoration but he's got his little red outfit on so I'm saying Christmas there were several of them they came in different sizes I think they were made in Hong Kong so probably part of that exotic Asian decor movement that was so popular in the 60s but I'm not sure of that there's no mark on the bottom he's hard plastic I love these fake pearl rings on each hand, which is actually uh, a clip that's holding this little flute to him. He's got a red outfit, very exotic. Now he looks like wood, but he is plastic, hard plastic. And I don't see anything missing. He's nice and clean. And you can collect all of these. There were all kinds of, I think somebody plays the percussion and somebody plays the lute and whatnot, and this is some type of little Asian flute. So, all right, mid-century. Look at him right here with these candlestick holders. Very 1960s exotic. You have to love this. All right, let's put you back over here where you're supposed to be. And then finally, I did list the Christmas tree. Now, I believed it to be Atlantic Mold, and a nice subscriber wrote to me and said, Oh, yep, that's an Atlantic Mold. She even told me the, the number of the, the uh, production number of the glaze and whatnot. It's unmarked, which is what threw me off, because I often see uh, Atlantic Mold stamped on the bottom, but I don't see anything on this. But there it is. It is a... Hmm... Totally, uh, let's see, 17 inches, 4 inches on the base, 13 inches on, on the tree. You saw it before. There it is all plugged in. You can see it does come right off the base like that. Now, it's not chipped. Miracle. It's not cracked. Miracle. And it's only missing one little crystal. Now people call these light bulbs, but these are not light bulbs. As you know, the light bulb is on the inside. Now most of these are glued in by the previous owner, but there are some that, that are not. So I'll show you. I think everybody probably already knows this. These are made of plastic. In they get. In they go. Okay. My mother made one. Your mother made one. You probably made one. And they reproduce them in China. They sell them at Lowe's. This is the real deal, and it's a really nice one. Somewhere around here, it's missing one jewel. And I think... Well, you see, we have birds. And then there's flames. And then there's little flower shapes. I think one of the flower uh, plastic shapes has got a couple of petals broken off. You can get the replacements at craft, craft shops. Now, a lot of people want to know, can you put a star in the top? Well, here's the issue. Somebody filled this top up with something. I don't know what they stuck in there. Glue, silly putty, egg salad, I don't know. I have chipped away at that with a screwdriver. Look at what I did right there. You know what that is? Ooh! I pinched my finger in some pliers and the blood vessel came up. You didn't need to see it, so I'll use my other hand. I was working on the train set. Um, I have poked at this with a screwdriver. 
When I turn the tree upside down and I look up in it, I can see a hint of light through the tunnel. So there's a, a pinch of light that comes through. You can probably go ahead and bore the rest of that out carefully if you want to put a star up there. I'm leaving it like it is and letting the new owner decide what they want to do with it. Now the issue with these is, as you know, I have sold about six of these in my lifetime. The first one I ever sold, it broke. I didn't pack it right. The other five all made it successfully and I know how to pack these. It's low fired ceramic, doesn't take anything to break it. You probably know that. You can just take this tree off and sit it on a countertop and break it. It's so easy to break. Having said that, I'm going to ship it in two boxes. One box for the base, one box for the top. And remember, I don't set the shipping cost. It depends upon your zip code, my zip code, and the eBay shipping calculator does all the work. But I'm not charging any extra for the heavy duty box or the packing. You just are going to actually pay what the US Postal Service charges to ship this. And I can't do a whole lot about it, but I'm gonna pack it as best I can double boxed so that it gets to you safely. That just got listed today. It's a five day auction and I will ship it within 24 hours of the end of the auction. So hope that helps. Okay, backing up, you can see it all, but don't go away yet. I wanna tell you, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching me on the floor the other day, putting the train together. You gave such nice comments. I so, I realize that this is not about me. It's about our collective memories. And it's a delight for me to be able to bring memories back to you and share some of my old family photographs. You have been sending me all these Christmas decoration pho photographs because I asked for it. And I may have to do two videos because there's so many pictures, but I'm working on it and I'll let you know when I am uh, going to post it. It won't be until probably the week before Christmas. But I hope you'll come back tomorrow because tomorrow, December 10th, would have been or is my father's birthday. And in his honor and memory, I'm going to be back on the floor trying to get the rest of that train set together. And I'll do a little bit of filming and I'll hope you'll join me. I'm wishing you well. Okay, I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop. That's it for today. So long for now.